Hello, lovely internet strangers. I have been posted in a few weeks, and so for my loyal and curious subscribers, I wanted to make an update video to talk a little bit about the behind the scenes of what's going on with me and how it affects my channel, and generally what I've been thinking about my channel lately and where I wanted to go, and some of the questions I've been asking myself. So without further ado, what's been going on with me? Well, if you follow me on Locals, I've alluded a little bit to this, and I think I've alluded to it a little bit in videos here and there, but I have a lot of miscellaneous chronic health issues. I've had miscellaneous chronic health issues for pretty much as long as I can remember being a person, but my issues have gotten much more debilitating over the past year. I would say over the past three years, I kind of went into active detective mode, trying a bunch of things, trying to figure out what was going on with me, and I seem to have made a decent amount of progress. However, over the past year, for whatever reason, certain conditions decided to flare up and make themselves known and I've started to get some more answers but at the same time it seems likely that I have certain issues that may be present with me for the rest of my life. There's really no cure, only management. There's a couple things that I know are going on with me and there might be a few other things that I'm still investigating. I basically have a connective tissue disorder. I am one point away from meeting the criteria for hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or HE it's genetic, but it's the only subtype of this connective tissue disorder that does not yet have a known genetic marker. So there's diagnostic criteria. I'm one point short, basically. But that just means that I have hypermobile spectrum disorder, which is basically the same thing, except I just didn't quite meet the cutoff. But the medical issues are the same, and the treatment is the same. So what does this mean? What issues does this cause me? I've had hypermobility in most of my joints since I was a child, like for example, my knees bend backwards. And it's not just that I am hypermobile, my joints are also pretty unstable. And this means that the muscles around my joints work harder to compensate. And the reason this happens is that there's some genetic mutation that affects my collagen production. The analogy I use is imagine you built a house with really crappy materials. At first it'll be fine, but over time you're going to see all kinds of random issues with the house and you can kind of put a band-aid on it. But the real issue is that the house wasn't built properly in the first place place and everything is just kind of falling apart. That is basically what I can expect for myself as I age. Basically, it's a degenerative condition. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to completely fall apart by the time I'm old, but what I'm trying to say is that, yes, I've had issues related to this when I was younger that I didn't really know what was going on, like frequently waking up with a sprained wrist for no discernible reason, but basically I'm having more issues now because I'm older. Also, I was doing high intensity interval training for about 10 years which is pretty much the worst thing that I could have been doing for my joints. So I don't do that anymore. I do bar workouts now, which are helping build up the muscles around my joints because the problem is I get lots of bodily fatigue, like just body aches. And I wasn't really sure what was going on, but basically the problem is my joints. So if I have a day where I have a lot of activity, a lot of walking around, and particularly a lot of standing, standing in one place is pretty much the worst thing. I've always hated it, but now I kind of understand why because that's when my muscles have to work the hardest to kind of hold everything together. It's really uncomfortable and painful for me. You'll always see me leaning against a wall whenever I have to stand, basically. So I'm starting to do physical therapy related things to kind of help with that. I'm one of those people that does foam rolling. Now, the other side of this is that I have systemic issues throughout my body because of the crappy materials it's been constructed with because collagen and connective tissue are in pretty much every organ system throughout your body. So people with this genetic condition can manifest all kinds of issues or they may not manifest those issues. It's really dependent on the person and what other things they have going on genetically and their environment, what happens to them. So for example, I had a head injury a few years ago where I slipped like banana peel style in my tiny city bathroom and smacked the back of my head on the sink. Pretty much ever since, I've had all kinds of random issues. I 
had really bad post-concussion syndrome in terms of light sensitivity and memory issues. And I still have things going on to this day, like flashing lights making me nauseous. And so it's also possible that that has contributed to some of these issues cropping up because there's still so little that we know about the long-term effects of head injuries. And I also had another concussion about a year and a half ago where I fell down really sharply and basically had a whiplash induced concussion and having multiple concussions is definitely not a good thing. So I have a lot of issues going on, but the one that's really been bothering me over the past year is dysautonomia. And I think that I've had this since I was a child when I look back at the different issues that I've had over the years. But for those of you who don't know, dysautonomia means dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is the system that controls all the automatic processes in the body. Breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, digestion, temperature regulation, blood circulation, etc. So dysautonomia is an umbrella term that can mean a lot of different things. And for me, that means that I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. It means that when I stand up, my heart rate will shoot up at least 30 beats per minute from when I was lying down. And if I stay standing there, it will remain there. For a normal person, when they stand up like that, their heart rate will shoot up maybe 10 to 15 BPM and it'll quickly recover because their body knows how to compensate for the change in posture, for the orthostatic stress, orthostatic meaning standing up, and they can just go about life. It's cool. For me, that is not the case. I think the reason that this happens is because of the hyper mobile spectrum disorder, the faulty collagen, basically that my blood vessels are too stretchy, so to speak. And so too much blood drops into my lower extremities and my body has a hard time circulating it back. And so my heart beats faster to compensate. I also sometimes have orthostatic hypotension, which means when I stand up, my blood pressure drops. And for me, that involves basically vision loss temporarily, which is fun. I've never passed out. Some people do, but I definitely feel on the edge of passing out, but I usually kind of grab something and brace myself. That's been happening since I was a kid, but it would only happen very occasionally. But it's been happening a lot over the past year and even more recently, like almost every time that I stand. But so basically when I'm upright, even when I'm sitting upright, I will have an elevated heart rate. Tachycardia is defined at 100 BPM. I have this handy pulse oximeter that I got and I checked it before I started recording and and my heart rate was at 104 BPM. I have an exercise today. I haven't been running around the apartment. I just sat down here, was testing my setup, and then right before I started recording, it was at 104 BPM. And for reference, my resting heart rate, like when I'm lying down in bed, is 60 BPM, sometimes even a little bit lower. So my resting heart rate is fine. It's just when I try to do stuff, my heart rate goes haywire. And the problem is that A, it makes me feel awful over time. And B, it also makes me feel anxious. Like even though my mind isn't anxious, my body is anxious. I'm not clear on what's going on totally, but I think my body also tends to produce too much norepinephrine adrenaline basically. And also my pulse pressure, the difference between the top and bottom number in your blood pressure reading is chronically low, which usually is only seen in people experiencing hypovolemic shock, meaning they're losing an incredible amount of blood or people experiencing heart failure. And I'm obviously experiencing neither of those things because I've been checked out thoroughly, but it tends to make me feel kind of crappy. So I've been trying to do all the things that are recommended, which is basically to drink drink a lot of water, which I have to drink basically two of these every single day at a minimum. And I also have to increase my electrolytes, which includes potassium, but primarily sodium because electrolytes help you retain the water in your blood so that I'll have enough blood volume. But this is the opposite of what I was doing previously because there's a history of hypertension in my family. So I always tried to avoid salt, but this doesn't quite seem to be enough. I mean, it definitely helps. I'm using this medication that's a beta blocker. Basically it drops your heart rate 
great. I don't use it like just every day all the time. I'll basically take a dose that lasts for about four hours. Problem is it drops my blood pressure a bit and I already have chronically low blood pressure. So I have to be well salted and hydrated. And so I want to start trying to take it before I record videos because sometimes when I'm recording a video, if it's multiple videos, I'm recording for a while and I start to feel crappy. I also start to get out of breath. That's the one thing I haven't mentioned so far. It was the primary thing I started to notice when I started to investigate these issues. The first thing I noticed was that I was tanking in my workouts, which was highly unusual for me and I couldn't see a reason for it. I've been a super fit person for my entire life. Also that I was getting short of breath just walking around the apartment. So I would have taken a beta blocker before recording today, except it's the morning and I checked my blood pressure and I was not in a place to take the beta blocker because my blood pressure was like 88 over 73. So no, don't need to drop that anymore. But I have a myriad of other issues going on that may mean I could also have a potential autoimmune issue, which I'm being screened for. And there's this other condition that has to do with dysfunction of your mast cells, which are part of your immune response. That's kind of hard to diagnose, but it tends to co-occur with the other things I have going on. And based on some of the sensitivities I have, the different foods and chemicals and things, seems like it could be a thing. The other thing is that I tend to have chronic fatigue and it seems to be induced by activity. It could be chronic fatigue syndrome, I don't know, or it could just be an effect of the connective tissue disorder or POTS, I don't know. And then finally, the last kind of relevant symptom is that I will experience brain fog. The best way I can describe this is I don't even have the executive functioning to make myself a meal. It's like I want to sit down and script, I want to sit down and edit, but I don't have the brain capacity. So I just wanted to share all of that in case any of my subscribers, you know, care to know what's going on behind the scenes, but also to let you know how that affects my channel. Basically that I would love to be able to stick to a regular schedule of posting once a week or even twice a week, but I also want to put out content that is of a certain quality. I'm trying not to be an uber perfectionist, but I do have kind of a minimum standard for myself. And especially when it comes to certain videos I've maybe been thinking about for a long time, like the illiberal reformers video series. If I hit this brain fog, if I hit this fatigue, and I just know that I could force myself to try to do it, but the quality is going to be really bad or not where I want it to be, I'd rather wait until my symptoms are a little bit better managed than just putting out something subpar. And like I said, it also affects my ability to record because sometimes I'm not feeling well enough to not only sit upright for a long time and record, but also have the brain capacity to be entertaining, be interesting, do the kind of quality analysis that people are used to from me. When I'm recording these videos, I have to be on, so to speak, and sometimes I'm not always there. So I'll make a plan for the channel. If you follow me on Locals, you'll see me kind of plan out what I want to do, and then health issues rear their ugly head. And I wish they didn't affect my brain, because at least maybe if I just couldn't get out of bed, at least I could lie there and edit. But the fact that it affects essentially my cognitive processing ability really sucks. And unfortunately, recently I had an experience when I was traveling where I got stuck in an airport and basically didn't sleep for 48 hours, except for a five minute power nap here or there. And I feel like before I went traveling, my health issues were starting to become better managed, but sleep deprivation for that long would be bad for anyone but for someone with my underlying health issues, I think was particularly bad. And I've kind of reverted since then. I've really been struggling. My pulse pressure has been really low. I've been really dizzy. I also get nauseous sometimes. Just everything's been awful and I've kind of been recalibrating. And today is the first day that I have felt anything resembling my normal self where I could actually sit here and make a video. So I decided to seize the moment. I love doing my YouTube channel and I would love for my YouTube channel to essentially be viable as a full-time thing. But basically for a while, I've been taking a sabbatical 
from regular life, from full-time work, and I've done some freelance stuff, I've worked on some random projects, taken different courses, exploring different things, and I feel like I finally kind of have like a viable path toward making income, but that means I need to put time into that, so I can't put everything into my YouTube channel. I could, I could try focusing entirely on my YouTube channel, and I know that maybe eventually this channel could be a source of income for me, but I don't know when that will be, and I just know that the approach that I've taken to my channel so far isn't the most conducive to serious channel growth. I think the closest channel to mine that I can think of is Poe the Person, but I think that she kind of blew up because of her being a female engineer and making a video after the James Damore Google memo incident, and then people just started following her for that, and then she also kind of takes like a big sky approach and just talks about whatever she wants to talk about, and that's kind of changed over time. Like, I know that I could focus on one particular thing, but I don't really want to. You know, there's just like a lot of different things I want to talk about, and I think sometimes I also get bored talking about just one thing. Like, I know I could focus my channel on literally just reading feminist books and making videos about them and anti-feminist books or other books, but I don't want to just do that. You know, sometimes I just want to share my thoughts about things, and sometimes I want to talk about feminists, and sometimes I want to talk about relationships, and sometimes I want to talk about men and women, and sometimes I want to talk about TV and movies, but all from my kind of particular weird perspective. I have gotten more subscribers so far this year, but of course that also makes me a little bit anxious about living up to their expectations, you know, I'll get these nice comments, but then I'm like, oh, I have to make sure my content is of a certain quality or they're gonna unsubscribe, which you know what, if people want to unsubscribe, you know, that's their choice, right? No hard feelings. And I get a lot of nice comments, you know, I've gotten people who said things like, I don't agree with anything you said, but this is a good video, which is a nice compliment. But I also sometimes feel a little like worried or apologetic when people will comment on some particular video and then say that they're subscribing because of that particular video, when I know that that's not really the only thing that I talk about on this channel. I'll get someone who finds my video about the heroine's journey and then they subscribe and I'm like, okay, but I don't only talk about the heroine's journey and then someone will come to my channel because of my video about Peterson and Brett on polyamory and I'm like, okay, but I don't only talk about polyamory or even relationships and then someone else will come to my channel because of videos I make about the publishing industry and I'm like, okay, but I don't only make videos about publishing. You know, I have different playlists on my channel to try to make it easier for people when they're discovering my content, but I don't know how much that helps. I try to look at the analytics on my channel and try to figure out what people are most interested in, but it's kind of difficult. I keep waiting for some one video that I'll have that will just hit the algorithm and make it big. I mean, the Peterson and Brett on polyamory video has been doing really well just organically, not from external sources, just from YouTube search terms. And same with that video I happened to make about James Rodet changing his name to James Rodriguez. A lot of random normie people I think found that video and didn't like it, but whatever. That's their prerogative. So I have a couple bigger things that I'm working on, like the Illiberal Reformers series, a series on the feminine mystique, finally, and I have two other feminist and anti-feminist books that I finished that will come after, The Scum Manifesto and The Manipulated Man, and by the end of the year I want to do a video series on sci-fi fantasy and publishing and the Hugo awards and the history of that, and my personal perspective being in that particular swamp. That's been highly requested, but as for everything in between, sometimes I find things that I want to talk about and I'm not sure if you guys are going to find it interesting, and this is where it's easier to be the kind of channel where you just put out the same kind of content and you kind of know why people are following you, and you don't have to worry about losing a few people here or there because you're not posting the kind of content that they want to see in a particular time frame so they get bored. So part of me wonders if I should just focus more efforts on these more detailed videos and not worry about posting videos where I share random thoughts about 
all these other things. But at the same time, I know that if I don't post videos frequently enough, YouTube definitely lowers your channel. And I do enjoy making those other videos. So I just don't know what my posting schedule is going to be like, but there will be more content. If you're a loyal subscriber and you don't care if it takes me a while to get back to the kind of content that you're interested in, I just wanted to say thank you and I'm glad for everyone who has sent me really nice comments and even the mean comments or maybe just critical comments. I'm a little bit behind on responding to comments right now, but I read all of them and the gave me a lot to think about and I just appreciate anyone who takes the time to leave a comment and I just wanted to let you all know that you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit but if I go another three weeks without posting it's not because I'm giving up on the channel it's just because I have this stupid dysfunctional meat suit that manages to kind of keep me from doing the things that I want to do but I'm working on managing it better and beating this meat suit into submissions. So if there are any videos or topics that you really want to see, like right now, you're dying to see them. Even if you've told me in the past, feel free to drop that in the comments below so that I can read it while I am reprioritizing my content schedule. So thank you to all my subscribers, both the OG and the new crew, so to speak. I'm not going to do my whole spiel because I assume you are all subscribed. So so I'm just gonna say I hope to have more content for you very soon.